I actually didn't get my diagnosis in my childhood, right? I got it when I was 18. Like when I was younger, I had speech issues, uh, like mainly stuttering, but it wasn't pointed down to ADHD at any point, so yeah. It... My name is Sabika. I am a student of uh, psychology at undergraduate level in Amity University, Dubai. At first, when I got my diagnosis, it was very relieving in a way to know that there is something that described a lot of what I was going through in one diagnosis. I feel like it helps take the, like, the pressure away from blaming everything on yourself and knowing that there are, there are things that you struggle with that others have struggled with, with as well. It has a name, it has most importantly, it has treatments. Um, in childhood, I was like a very impulsive kid and always like always zoned out. Like daydreaming was the biggest thing. And I think that's a, a big, I mean, problem with most girls with ADHD. They're, most girls are usually more inattentive than hyperactive or impulsive. Um, but yeah, like I struggled with all of them. Um, inattention hyperactivity, impulsivity, everything, all of that. And just like getting into trouble, even like, so with ADHD, it's not like you want to get into trouble. It's more of like you find yourself there and you're like, how did I get here? Because when you're impulsive, you don't realize that like what you're doing is wrong. You just get the thought and you do it. But the thing is that most of the time with children, uh, with ADHD, and it was also my case, and the children that like I volunteer with as well, uh, when they're not diagnosed in childhood, they have a tendency to develop anxiety because they don't understand what they're going through. Obviously, they're younger. Uh, most of the times, they're, they might not even be good at reading like social cues and stuff, right? Uh, so they just turn it inwards and they start feeling anxious or like some children, they get aggressive instead because um, they don't yet have an explanation for what they're going through and everything. And yeah, it was very similar for me. So like I was a really anxious kid growing up. So that's why at 18, when like things started making sense, it helped me to like take a bit of the burden away and to like understand that all of this is not because like I'm doing something wrong. It's just, it's what neurodiversity is. I mean, like all of us are different. It's just that for some people, it's at a much heightened degree. It's at a, it's at a different level. But the good thing is that there is treatment available and you can manage it, even though you can't cure it or anything, you can always manage it. I would say it's never a dull moment. <laughs> so even if there is like nothing I'm doing physically, there will always be going on something in my head, some sort of like daydreaming, some sort of, I, I would describe it as like having a thousand TVs on at one time, watching like a thousand movies at one time, or having a thousand tabs open at one time. And you have to tend to each one of them. So that's where like the inattention for me comes from. Like, it's just like to pay attention to each one of them. And that's why it's very important that if you have ADHD, you also get help with anxiety or depression. A lot of people who are not diagnosed till adulthood, they have issues with depression as well, of course, because of turning it all inwards. Because anxiety can actually make this issue of inattention as well as depression can make this in issue of inattention much worse, which is what you see in most of the adults with ADHD who are from what I've heard, like most of the adults with ADHD were actually first diagnosed with depression before ADHD. So ADHD is basically attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and it has three different subtypes. So you can be either predominantly inattentive, where your main complaint is that um, lack of concentration or attention to like a particular task. Um, and then there's predominantly hyperactive, or impulsive where like your main complaint is that you're restless or impulsive and stuff like that. Impulsive is like you reacting without um, thinking first or taking an, an action without like properly going through a thought first. Like the thought just comes to your head and you act on it. Uh, and then there's the combined type, uh, which is the most common one where your complaints are both inattentive and impulsiveness or hyperactivity. And most of the people are diagnosed with that subtype, the combined subtype. And in that subtype, you're not too inattentive or too hyperactive. You're an equal mix of both. And your complaints are relating both, are regarding both of them. And what I would like people to know about adults with ADHD, it, it is very possible that ADHD represents itself differently when you're a child than when you're an adult. For some people, they are hyperactive like from their childhood and that's their complaint till like adulthood and the same with inattention. But sometimes the way it presents itself can vary and 
I think it can also depend on your environment, right? Um, so let's say if your environment was more negative or something, or like also the fact that you become more self-aware after a certain age, like six, 12 years old, stuff like that. You start becoming more self-aware. So you turn all of your like outward restlessness inwards, and that can in turn like make you more um, anxious. So like internal restlessness. I've heard that from a lot of people uh, with ADHD saying that um, they've gotten comments like, oh, you don't look like you have ADHD. Are you sure you have it? Are you sure it's not a misdiagnosis and stuff like that? But with adults, it's, it can be very different because we are not children anymore. We are aware of like what we are doing. We, we are like more self-conscious. We, we know what's right and what's wrong and everything. But without a diagnosis, it can be really hard to know what you're supposed to do or even that what you're experiencing is not what everyone else experiences. And that was like a thing for me as well. Like I used to think that in everyone's minds, they always have like a thousand tabs open. So when they would tell me that I'm in inattentive, I wouldn't understand like why would they say that. So like just be more empathic and understand that not everyone thinks in the same way as you. And because w when you are like neurodivergent, let's say you've like lived with a different brain your whole life, it's very hard for you to understand as well what a neurotypical would feel like or like how their mind works and for them to understand how a person with ADHD mind, mind works. And so it's important to be aware of this and educate yourself on this. There are ADHDers who are like really calm and they've really like learned to manage their ADHD. But just like ask people if they're okay, ask if they're doing fine, don't just like jump to conclusions. Because another problem with some people with ADHD is also sleep. And um, I have experienced that like a lot of times, so like that's like restlessness, <laughs> you know, like my sleep is never like very consistent. So I would like wake up multiple times throughout the night and I would just have this thought like I want to do something right now. But then physically I'm drained from like the whole day and that's really annoying as well. So like never say like that someone doesn't look like they have ADHD or like how could they have it and all of that. You don't know what they're like experiencing personally. Their brain literally doesn't know what other way to function in than what it is functioning in. It's not because they want to offend you that they're behaving a certain way, or it's not because they have no regard for rules or anything. They might not actually know what you're talking about from their perspective. And another thing is like, no, not everyone with ADHD jumps off the walls. <laughs> Some people, they're really conscious, so they might be very anxious and they might not show that to you. And instead they would be much more, um, you know, inattentive. Um, and also another thing is that it presents itself differently for everyone. So someone could, uh, like there, there could be people who would act outward instead. So, you know, get themselves into trouble with law and everything. There have been adults who, because they're not diagnosed, they start uh, abusing substances as a way to self-medicate. So that's another thing, I mean, uh, substance abuse with ADHDers, adult ADHDers, it's really high because it's like, it's, it's a way for them to self-medicate. Even eating disorders, they're quite prevalent in adults with ADHD, especially binge eating disorder, because it's something that's impulsive in nature and like, you know, you, you, you feel stimulated by it. They use food as a source of stimulation. So yeah, just be empathic and try to make yourself more aware on the topic. So there are ways to manage ADHD without medication. I mean, I, I understand like in some places you might not have access to the medications that might work for you or and these like fewer options, they might you like you might get side effects from them. So and sometimes even with certain medications, like you don't want to continue them because of the side effects and everything. So there are other ways of Personally, I have never been calm enough to try meditation, but <laughs> I've heard that meditation has helped with ADHD a lot because it basically teaches you how to be mindful and everything. Uh, for me, sports has been a best one. So I love running, I love athletics, swimming, all of that. And it's really good for your mental health as well. It releases endorphins in your brain, so you feel like much more happier and like, yeah, you feel like you can, you know, take on anything that, that comes in your way for the day. And it helps you, for me, like, uh, the best thing is, like, it helps me burn off the excess energy. So throughout my lectures, I can concentrate on them or any such kind of, like, physical activity. Otherwise, you can do art. It's also a way for people to, like, release their restlessness. And, like, um, there are amazing artists out there with ADHD. And, yeah, you should look into that. 
And so with art is the same thing. It's kind of like an outlet to let out these uh, thoughts and these ideas that you're having and everything. The act of like putting those thoughts on a canvas through a brush, it, it like just that, you know, that sensation, it can be quite relaxing as well of painting or drawing or anything. It's like you're releasing that energy, especially for probably for like predominantly inattentive ADHDers. It could be like a good tip to try art, painting, all of that. I don't know if it would be called romanticizing or not, but a lot of times they would like to talk about ADHD like, I don't know, it's some sort of a superpower and everything. Uh, just because like someone with ADHD was able to better manage it and like they were able to, I don't know, go far with it and all of that. But the important thing here to understand is that it's not like, it's not a superpower and it's not like, because you, you see like some people, it's actually a privilege if you can do that. If you can have ADHD and you can like go far with it, great, it's like, it's, it's your privilege, but that's not everyone with ADHD. And when you say that it's the superpower, you're putting an image out there and putting like others under pressure and under this complex, like they're not good enough. Other ADHDers with that. Because all of us are different and maybe like they're not able to do that, so what? But it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a superpower and all of that because that's just like taking it to the complete other side, you know? It's just important to have like a proper understanding of what it is and just educate yourself on that, how people experience it, and that's it. We can live with not saying that ADHD is a superpower, right? We can live with that. I mean, you can do great things with it once you know where your strengths are, because there's a thing in ADHD which is like hyper-focusing, and if you find something that you're interested in, you would go days without like eating or sleeping or anything and work on that, because that's really how interested we can get in it. And I think like such, um, such putting such messages out there that all, everyone with ADHD is creative. I don't know, everyone with ADHD has a superpower because they have ADHD and stuff like that. Just understand it for what it is. It's just a difference in the way of paying attention or having like extra energy and all of that and basically that is it. So there are huge misunderstandings about special needs. I mean, if you're a child or an adult, people think that you're less capable of doing certain tasks which, uh, which others are not. When in reality, that's not the truth. There are people with special needs who've done amazing things. But the only difference is that they found the methods that worked for them. They found their field in life, which I know finding it's hard. But when we have more awareness of this, we can help those people get to that point faster. Because anyone with special needs is not any less capable of doing anything uh, than a neurotypical. They, they can do that, they just need their own tools, their own ways to reach there. But nothing is impossible. I mean, as long as they're trying, and I can tell you they try like twice as hard. I know that even like living with ADHD, I've always uh, tried twice as hard as my classmates to um, reach a certain end point. I mean, on the outside, sometimes it can look like you're very diligent and like you really wanna you know, study and all of that, but what they don't understand is like, you need to start studying earlier, you need to start projects earlier because it takes you longer to get there. And with time, it could probably improve, you know, if you're, if you're willing to work on it and everything. But just be, just be patient with, with, with others, just try to understand what they're going through. Everyone's struggles are different. I mean, the way, uh, one person experiences ADHD, for example, it's not necessary the other person will experience it the same way, or autism, or with any of the condition. Because we are all brought up in different ways, and we, we, we all experience like different challenges. We all have different brains in general. So just like you wouldn't be rude to anyone else, a neurotypical, who's having challenges, let's say, financially, and that's causing them like mental distress. You, you wouldn't be rude to them, right? You would try to like help them out as much as possible if they're having familial issues or anything like that, any issues in their life. What I would like for people to know, people with ADHD to know, that um, you're not alone and you're not struggling with something that no one else has gone through before. There is, There, there are treatments available for this and you're not, any less worthy of help than the next person just because you feel like what you're going through is like so big or, or anything like that. Reach out, get help, like make yourself, ed educate yourself on what you're going through. You have this like kind of extra energy probably like mentally or physically 
that if you put into the right place, you can accomplish massive things. Because you have, like, as long as you're not r running out of energy or anything, and you're putting it in the place where you're interested in, you're, where, where you're interested in, and you have like this capability to hyper focus at times, I mean, why not use that to the best of your, you know, capabilities and to your benefit? Because in that way, where you're literally proving to yourself that at the end of the day no matter like what you've been told that you can't do xyz things which you in the end you did you will prove yourself to be the winner in the end because in the end you're you're accomplishing it besides whatever anyone else is telling you that you can't do so yeah that's it don't feel alone and know that there are help there there is help and there are supports out there and i wish you the best <laughs> yeah <laughs>